Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. Well, I think uh, my military experience, which is certainly a part of my identity, uh, shaped my leadership beliefs in many different ways. In fact, um, over the last 20 years or so, I compile a list of my beliefs about leadership. Um, each one of those beliefs comes from a story that occurred sometime in my life and led to that belief. Uh, for example, uh, when I got my first infantry platoon, uh, it was in the 82nd Airborne Division. I graduated from West Point. And uh, the soldiers generally at that time had not graduated from high school. And they had gone through life uh, believing that they were unsuccessful because that's what society had told them. Uh, but it was my belief and my discovery that if I could teach them to be successful, and if I could take a small success and turn it into a more difficult task and a larger success, and create a virtuous cycle of success that everybody wants to be successful. And um, I've never met anyone in my life who doesn't want to succeed. So that's the leadership belief I have that I then try to translate to what I do every day. For example, do I spend more time catching people trying to succeed and succeeding, or do I spend the majority of my time catching people failing? Oftentimes, as leaders, we spend too much time trying to catch people failing because we're time starved. I don't know any leader in the world who would say they have too much time on their hands. And as a result of that, we manage by exception. And if you manage by exception, you tend to focus on what's going wrong. So you can see how my experience in the military led to a belief, and that belief translates to what I do today and also what I teach today. Well, I think the Procter & Gamble company is a, a unique company. Uh, when I was leaving the military, uh, having an engineering undergraduate degree and an MBA, I was looking for a company where I could make, try to make a difference uh, in the world. This is a company that's been around for 175 years this coming October. It's a company whose purpose has always been about improving the lives of the world's consumers. Uh, today we're reaching about 4.4 billion people in the world with our products. We'd like to reach everybody in the world, and we'd like to get everyone who wants to make a difference in the world to join our company and help us develop the products and the services that will make people's lives better. I think our company was um, prescient in sending me to Asia in 1991. I spent 10 years of my uh, career living in Asia. Um, Asia really is uh, the growth space uh, for the new economy of the world. Uh, for example, in our baby care business, Pampers Disposable Diaper is one of our largest brands. Over 40% of the babies are being born in Asia, so obviously that's a very, very important market. Uh, if you go to Asia today, generally you won't see the reflection of the economic uh, recession that is occurring in Europe uh, or the weakness in the United States. Um, in China right now, obviously, you see a, 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 a lower growth rate, but still it's a, it's a phenomenal growth rate that most other countries in the world would like. Um, my biggest tip for doing business in Asia would be get to know, get to know your consumer, uh, get to know their culture, get to know their language. One of the things we deal with as a global company is uh, incredible diversity. We have a diverse consumer we're trying to improve the life of. That's our purpose, to improve lives. We have a diverse employee base. Uh, we want our employees to represent the consumers they're trying to serve. In that kind of an environment, the golden rule is no longer good enough. The golden rule, which you were taught when you were young, is treat everyone the way you want to be treated. Well, that makes sense in a homogeneous environment, but in a heterogeneous environment, an environment of diversity, that makes no sense. So at the Procter & Gamble Company, we have something called the platinum rule treat other people the way they want to be treated. That's a very high standard, and it's a difficult standard because it says before you can treat someone a certain way, you need to know them. You need to know their language, you need to know their culture, 
and you need to be able to, to treat them properly. Practical application of that is in many Asian cultures, Asians are taught to, uh, to not speak up, um, to be uh, uh, conscious of hierarchy. And uh, of course, in our company, what we want is a democracy of ideas. We want everybody's best ideas. So as the leader, I've got to know that that culture exists and I've got to provide an opportunity for those Asian employees to speak up in meetings and actually call on them so they'll participate. Um, Procter & Gamble is a bit unique in that uh, we recruit from college campuses, MBA programs like, uh, like Tepper, uh, and we promote from within. We don't go outside the company generally and hire people at senior levels. So everybody starts um, at, the same, at the same level and at the same time. Um, I, think that's a, I think that's a positive. Uh, I came out of five years in the U.S. military. I had an MBA, um, and I started uh, at the same level as everyone else. But we reward based on performance and, uh, and, and not longevity. So you can move along as, as fast as your performance will allow you to do. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, on college campuses. It's one of the reasons I'm here today, because if you promote from within, if you hire from campuses, you have to be there to find the very best people. The people we're looking for are people with impeccable integrity, people who are leaders. And when I say leaders, I don't just mean a title of leadership, but rather the process of leadership, uh, leading thoughts, um, making, creating change for the positive. If you're gonna improve people's lives, like our purpose, you have to, you have to be a, a great leader. We look for people who are collaborative and can work across boundaries. People who can get along in team assignments that you may have. Um, those are, those are and, and people with good character, obviously, uh, which includes integrity and things like putting the organization needs above their own needs. The best advice I give to Procter & Gamble people, to students, and to my children is exactly the same, which is don't think that when you graduate from school, you're done learning. Uh, think about the fact that you have to continue learning throughout your career. I'm a big fan of Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and in there he tells the story of the, the two men sawing wood, and the one whose uh, uh, pile is increasing faster than the other sits down occasionally, and Stephen discovers that he's sitting down in order to sharpen his saw. We have to continually sharpen our saw. And today it's more difficult than ever before because things are changing so quickly. So much new knowledge is getting created. Um, I often hear P&G employees, young employees, say that they wish their managers would text message more. And what I remind those young people of is someday there'll be a text message, uh, analogy of a text message that you won't do. Uh, because we're all, we all tend to get set in our ways. And what do we do then to make sure we're constantly working to learn new things and being, uh, being important contributors to society?